the president's remarks at the signing of the ratification of the convention with Mexico for the solution of the problem of the Shazmazal from the treaty room in the mansion of the White House, December 20th, 1963. I know that uh, I speak for all of you when uh, I say how grateful we are to Ms. Kennedy for the fire fine job she's done in uh, redecorating this uh, treaty room where we meet today. I see in front of us the chandelier that uh, once uh, was in the White House uh, during Theodore Roosevelt's administration, and the story went that uh, the president, uh, before they had air conditioning, uh, was troubled by the wind blowing the chandelier uh, pieces together and the tinkling noise, so he told him to take it down to the Capitol, and the butler said, well, what do I do with it? The Capitol said, give it to the vice president. He needs something to keep him awake. <laughs> 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 so, uh, <laughs> After Ms. Kennedy had observed me for a while as vice president, I guess she decided I no longer needed the chandelier to keep me awake, and she asked me if I'd bring a chandelier back. And by that time, uh, Senator Mansfield uh, uh, realized that he didn't want to be charged with giving away Senate property or liquidating the Senate. So he very generously agreed to make a loan to the White House. So for the information of all of you, the chandelier that you're now viewing is on loan to the White House uh, from the Senate. We're glad to welcome Secretary Wirtz back this morning. We're very happy to see the senators who have participated uh, in the ratification of this treaty at present with us. Uh, this is a moment of which we can all be proud. We're particularly delighted to have with us a distinguished ambassador from our neighboring country, uh, the beloved uh, Carilla Flores from Mexico. We're taking the final step in bringing to a close a problem which has been a thorn in the side of our relations with Mexico for almost a century. The way in which the thorn has been removed is a real tribute to the goodwill between the people and the leaders of our two countries. It indicates that old and distasteful problems can be solved if men of honor seek to understand the other man's viewpoint. I recall the first visit that I made to President uh, Adolfo Lopez Mateus in Mexico, before he took the oath of office as president, he raised the Shamazal question, and we agreed there that we would start to work on it. And uh, through the administration of President Eisenhower and President Kennedy, uh, great progress was made and resulted in the Senate, uh, under the leadership of Senator Fulbright, uh, ratifying his treaty by an overwhelming vote. Uh, I hope that uh, other problems in our hemisphere uh, and for that matter, throughout the world will be solved with similar tolerance and trust. I think it's always good if uh, we just put ourselves in the other man's position and try to estimate how we'd feel if he were in our place and we were in his place, and then make our judgments accordingly. That's what we've done in this uh, situation, and we think great benefits will flow not only to Mexico, but the United States, and uh, of course, uh, most of all, to state of Texas, uh, who, where this land is located. So, Mr. Ambassador, we welcome you here for this historic occasion. We say thanks to the members of the Senate who made it possible. We express uh, gratitude to Secretary Rusk for the leadership he's given. And uh, we're even delighted to have the television cameras here for this informal uh, press meeting. <laughs> They even distribute pens by seniority here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe this is the biggest and the best pen of them all, and Mr. Ambassador, I want to give you the pen that put the in and lends it. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, this is the first time you haven't gotten the first pen. Wayne's been the author of most of this stuff. While this is a treaty room, I'd like you to also know this is the room where President Johnson... Uh, met with his cabinet for the first time, President Andrew Johnson. And uh, this is where President Lyndon Johnson signed his first treaty. And in order to do it, I came in here the other night and looked in the door, and my daughter, Lucy, was sitting at the head of the table studying plain geometry. <laughs> so uh, I asked her mother if she couldn't arrange to put a desk across the hall for her, make a study room out of it so that when, if we needed the cabinet room, it would be available. So we picked up plain geometry and Macbeth and a few other things and hauled them across the hall. 